Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck. This one is titled Swine Surprise. It's a red-white tokens deck, but with a twist, we're playing Transmogrify, the 4-mana sorcery from M21 that exiles target creature, and that creature's controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card, and that player puts that card onto the battlefield and then shuffles the rest into their deck. And Transmogrify is also known as a polymorph effect in Magic, and polymorph effects are pretty fun to build around. You just need to make sure that your deck only has one creature that you're guaranteed to hit with your Transmogrify, and then the rest of the deck can contain a few token makers that aren't necessarily creatures. So in this case we've got a whole bunch of planeswalkers, sorceries and enchantments that provide creature tokens that we can then target with Transmogrify but then we're always guaranteed to hit the one creature in the deck, and in this case the only actual creature in the deck are the three copies of Andre's Forerunners, the 8-mana 7-7 seven, seven boar with Vigilance, Trample and Haste, and when the Forerunners enters a battlefield, other creatures we control get plus 2 plus 2, Vigilance and Trample until end of turn, which is a very nice effect to grant to a whole bunch of tokens. And the other effect that we have that's very similar to Transmogrify is Luca's minus 2 ability, just to add a bit more consistency to the deck. So the minus 2 on our 5 mana Planeswalker will basically accomplish the same, so we can potentially get multiple Andres Foreigners in play in case the first one is not enough. Now we can technically also target the opponent's creatures with Transmogrify, but that's probably not a play we're going to make very often. And if you take a look at the mana base, we don't actually have any green mana to hardcast our Andres Forerunners, so the only way we can get it in play is by cheating it into play with our Transmogrify or Luka. But then we do get some advantages by playing a red-white mana base as opposed to trying to fit in green mana as well. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out with our two drops, where we've got the full playset of Erase the Alarm, two mana instant, making two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. We've got Forbidden Friendship, a sorcery that makes a 1-1 one, one red dinosaur creature token with haste, and a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. We also have three copies of Fire Prophecy as some cheap removal, dealing three damage to target creature. And then we can also put a card from our hands on the bottom of our library. And if we do draw a card, so this is a very useful way of putting an Andres Forerunner that's stuck in our hand on the bottom of our library, so we can still find it with our Transmogrify and Luka minus two ability. And uh, it's no longer stuck in our hand, of course. Next up we've got the full playset of Omen of the Sun, a 3-man enchantment with Flash, that when it enters a battlefield makes two 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens, and we also gain two life, and later we can sacrifice the enchantment in order to scry two, maybe helping us find the Transmogrify if we don't have one already. Then we've got some Planeswalkers with three copies of Tybalt that can make a 1-1 one, one, Devil creature token with the minus 2 ability, so we can potentially make two Devils, and when the Devil token dies it deals one damage to any target, and then Tybalt's passive ability also says the opponents can't gain life, which is very useful against Uro. Then we also have three copies of Chandra and Kaleid of Flame, which can also make additional tokens with the second zero ability, and those tokens will get sacrificed end of turn, so they make for perfect targets for the Transmogrify. And the first ability can also put additional loyalty on our red Planeswalkers, which can occasionally come in handy, maybe lets us minus Tybalt an additional time. And then the minus two ability lets us replay an instant or sorcery from the graveyard, can be useful to make additional tokens with friendship or raise the alarm, or just get back a fire prophecy if we need to kill a creature. Then at four mana we've got our full playset of Transmogrify, alongside Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis, which can make a whole bunch of tokens with the minus two ability. The minus one also pumps up our tokens if we need to get past some blockers, and we can escape Elspeth from the graveyard for six mana. And then finally at 5 mana we've got two copies of Sarkhan the Masterless, since we are playing a whole bunch of Planeswalkers, and Sarkhan can potentially turn those all into 4-4 four, four rent dragons with flying, with the plus 1 ability, so that's another way to potentially close out the game. And the minus 3 is also pretty good, making a 4-4 four, four dragon token with flying, and then the passive can potentially hold off small tokens from the opponent if we make a dragon token. And then we've got two copies of Luka, which can find the Andres Forerunners with the minus two ability. The advantage over Transmogrify is that we can potentially use it twice, so we can get two Forerunners if the first one was not enough. And then we've got three copies of Andres Forerunners. We don't really want to draw it, but we can potentially put it on the bottom with our Fire Prophecy if we do. 
And then going over the mana base, we don't actually have any green sources to hardcast the Forerunners. The advantage of potentially splashing a bit of green is that we can gain access to March of the Multitude as another powerful token maker, but I don't think it's really necessary. Usually we can end the game before we would cast a March anyway. And then we could also potentially try a mono red build, which I tried in the early access event. And the advantage there is that we gain access to the dwarven mine in the mana base as another free token maker essentially. But we do lose some other powerful token makers like Raise the Alarm and Elspeth. And then the other advantage of a two color mana base is that it's much easier to include some of the castles. So we've got two copies of Castle Ardenvale that can make a 1-1 token and Castle Embereth, another very powerful one, which can give all our creatures plus one plus O, which can potentially double our damage output if we have a bunch of tokens in play. And then we've got four planes, six mountains, four sacred foundries, four temple of triumph, which we're happy to play on turn one since we're not doing anything on turn one anyway. Could potentially play Satyr's Cunning as a one mana token maker, but it's a little bit underwhelming. And then two copies of Fabled Passage to round out our mana base. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and we're missing the Transmogrify, but we've got a nice hand otherwise. Can fetch up another mountain. I guess I'm fine playing Tybalt on turn 3 and then Chandra on 4. Just play planes. And then Passage can fetch up a mountain on turn 4. Don't think I shuffle anything back, maybe the Chandra. Although having another Planeswalker to play on turn 4 to then play Sarkhan on 5 could be pretty nice. So I think I'll decline. I could potentially have a better draw with an Elspeth, although there we go. Or with a Transmogrify, but... Playing a Chandra on turn 4 is still fine. Can maybe get back the Fire Prophecy from the Graveyard too. Opponent on Teamer Elementals, perhaps. Well, we drew a Luka, so that's another way of getting the Forerunners in play. And there's Omnath. Takes out a token. And there's a land, perfect. Heroes, rally to me. Could also play Sarkon plus and hit them for four in the air. Is it better than transmogrifying a token here? Probably not. Can still play Sarkon next turn and turn all my planeswalkers into dragons. Yeah, our opponent's in trouble. Another Omnath. Still leaves him dead on board. And uh, Sarkon represents at least 12 more damage. So how much damage would we be able to deal here? We can play Sarkon, turn all our Planeswalkers into 4-4 Dragons, minus Luka sacking a token, turning it into another Forerunners. So we have a 9-9 Forerunners, a 7-7 Forerunners, and a 3-3 token. That's already 19 damage, plus another 18 from the Planeswalkers that gets the plus 2 plus 2 bonus. So 19 plus 18. A whopping uh, 37 damage, not bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, I can keep this. I can put one Sarkon on the bottom with Fire Prophecy and hope to draw more token makers and lands. Turn one Gilded Goose. Uh, I guess we might be putting a Forerunners on the bottom instead. No real point in attacking. Worst Riders, her opponent probably on John's Sacrifice. 
Happy enough killing the Strider. Do it now in case we draw into a temple so we can play that instead of the planes. And that way we get to attack for two. Alright, Omen of the Sun, not bad. Can make some more tokens next turn. And set up our Transmogrify. Another Voice Rider. If we can dodge a Mayhem Duffel next turn, that would be nice. Although at the moment, with the mana situation they have, they wouldn't be able to cast it. Now they can. It's gonna be a Trail of Crumbs instead. Into a Cauldron Familiar. We can trample over the cat pretty easily. Could play a Tybalt first. And wait another turn on the Transmogrify. But I probably want to get in while the getting's good. Not quite a lethal attack, but not too far from it. And then we'll still have the Forerunners in play for next turn. So they're gonna chump with the Goose and the Familiar. That's fine, we still trample over for a bunch. Opponents at four. They can potentially gain some life off the food tokens. Or bring back the Familiar and then activate Trail. So they're at 5 now. And a Vraska. Doesn't kill the Forerunners. Vraska doesn't do a whole lot here. Sometimes sacrifice is necessary. And my opponent sees her riding on the wall and explodes. Tibal's life gain prevention also could have been relevant in this matchup, stopping the life gain from familiar Vraska and other food tokens potentially. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And we've got just a nice curve of tokens and planeswalkers, even if we're missing the transmogrify. So I'll keep. Even have the castle to pump our tokens. And there we go, Transmogrify, perfect. So it just needs one more land and we're in business. Definitely interested in playing Elspeth first, if possible. Facing a Sultai ramp deck. I'll play Tybalt since they're likely playing Uro, so that can prevent quite a bit of life gain. Maybe they're a mutate deck and they're considering not blocking. Definitely possible. Opponent does eventually block. You don't look scared. My assistants are painfully sloppy. And there's Uro. And uh, Tybalt says, no thanks. Alright, no fourth land quite yet, but we can still develop our board with an extra Planeswalker. The more, the 
Now our opponent could have extinction events to clean up all my tokens, which would be unfortunate, but... We can potentially rebuild by using Chandra's minus two to get back a raise the alarm. They did not sacrifice the Fabled Passages quite yet. Something for six mana. Hydroid Crisis for four. Once again, Tybalt preventing the life gain. And there's a land, perfect. So we'll make some hasty elementals. And smash. They can eat one of the tokens. They probably wanted to block a different one. Since that elemental token was about to get sacrificed. And they ended up dying. So I guess it didn't matter how they blocked. Because they could have prevented one more damage with the Hydroid Crisis. But then uh, they still would have died exactly. So yeah, the life gain prevention from Tybalt being pretty relevant this game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? Doesn't have a Transmogrify, we're just curving Racy Alarm into Omen into Elspeth. Could be good enough in some games, but it's definitely not exciting. Yeah, given that we have a Foreigners in hand, it kind of feels like it's almost free to take a first mulligan. All right, this is slightly better. And what do we bottom? Could just be the Prophecy or could be one of the three mana token makers. Let's bottom the Omen. Well, the Omen can scry towards the Transmogrify, so it could be more valuable than Tybalt in some matchups. Kind of depends. We'll try this. And then Luca and Transmogrify are the cards we're looking for. Facing a Jeskai deck. I did decide to keep the Fire Prophecy, even though there's matchups where it might be a dead card. And there's Transmogrify, perfect. Turn 3 Omen, turn 4 Transmogrify, and all is good in the world. Hopefully. Uh oh. I guess our opponent might have a sweeper. Gotta kill the fairy. At least we can still play Omen end of turn. Instead of having to play it face first into a Shadow of the Sky. Do have a second Transmogrify, so that potentially represents an extra Forerunners. Kaya can exile my token. you had some dead things that needed to stay dead yeah if I drew another token maker I would have considered potentially playing it first since right now the transmogrify is not super impactful but I'll probably still uh, play it here Finish off Kaya, go face. And yep, there's a Shatter. Alright, Tybalt can give me an extra token maker at least. I would be honored to My friend is here to help your pain. I gotta keep the two fire prophecies in this exact position. Narsa shows up. 
no life gain from interplanar beacon. So I can hit my opponent for 10 next turn. Which is not quite enough, and they drew another shatter. Sarkon, that's a big game. Yeah, let's just jam Sarkon. And we'll finish off Narset's go face. And now if they shatter, we still have our two planeswalkers. And if they don't, we might be able to kill them with Transmogrify. Right, that's gonna conquer Sarkon. No. Hmm, that's too bad. Yeah, again, if I Transmogrify... Can hit my opponent for 10 damage, put him to 3, but then Shatter is going to be an issue. So maybe I do want to wait and maybe Scry with Omen, try and set up our next draw step, although then the second chapter of Conqueror's Death makes my stuff more expensive. Suppose if I Transmogrify, I can also Fire Prophecy my own token to deal them one more damage and maybe get rid of the other Fire Prophecy, so maybe it is still worth it here. I do also draw a card from the Forerunners dying. Although I guess the Conqueror's Death means I won't be able to play the Fire Prophecy here. I don't know, still seems worthwhile. <laughs> the problem with casting Prophecy now to deal one with the Devil is that they could just decide to then play Teferi and bounce the Forerunners instead of casting Shatter, and then I wouldn't be able to replay the Forerunners. That would be pretty awkward. So I think I just got a pass. And then I guess I'll be stuck with Prophecy in hand. Nah, raise the alarm's not bad. Although they can get back Teferi potentially. Guess we'll wait and see. Probably go full control here, so I can respond to them potentially getting Teferi back. It's gonna be a Kaya instead, which makes sense, they want to gain some life, although Tybalt prevents the life gain. Mm, Tybalt putting in a lot of work, once again. Yep, that works. Nickel Bolas minus threeing on a one loyalty table. Don't see that every day. And then end of turn I can raise the alarm and make a token with castle. So that's three more damage. So they're gonna be at one. So I probably have to clean up the planeswalkers instead. Could also scry with Omen if I scry to an Elspeth or a Chandra or even a Castle, they're dead, so plenty of ways we could kill them here. Transmogrified does it too. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Zoned, love this hand. No double white for Elspeth. Got a Forerunner stuck in hands. No Fire Prophecy to shuffle it back. No Transmogrify. Let's take a mulligan. This isn't much better, but I guess we can play some token makers early on. Turn one stone coil off a basic forest, so this is the green stompy deck. Can be a tough matchup. 
but if we can assemble the transmogrify combo, we should be able to go over the top. All right, it's an aggressive trade. We'll just raise the alarm end of turn. Yeah, I'll trade. Those horn beetles are probably going to get a lot larger than just a 2-2. Two -two. Vivian's bad news. Tearing this place to the ground. <laughs> so Tibble down, and then we gotta hope to draw an untapped land here so we can kill Vivian. Transmogrify is not bad. Probably still go after Vivian. Well, you're annoying. And then really need that land for. The ooze can turn into a 4-4. Four four. So the horn beetles gonna get that additional counter. The opponent having 4-4 four four creatures on defense also makes the attack with the forerunner less exciting. Since they can block my 3-3 three three tokens. My my, how you've grown. Another omen. So, if I have forbidden friendship, I can kill Vivian. It's probably worth it. And then still waiting for land 4. Questing beast is more bad news. So... Yeah, I'm forced to chum block. And at this point, transmogrify is not even gonna be enough. And we drew a temple. So not much I can do here. Play another omen, go up to nine. Can block the beasts, so I'm essentially at five. So I have to still chum both the ooze and the horn beetle, leaving me with four tokens. And they have another blocker. Yeah, I don't think we will be able to get there, sadly. Yeah, the green stompy matchup, we really need to be curving out perfectly for the uh, transmogrify to work out. Otherwise, we run into situations like this where they can just block all my tokens even through the plus two plus two.
We'll go out in a blaze of glory. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This seems okay. Can maybe put one Elspeth on the bottom with the Prophecy. The mana base is good. And we're all set to potentially leverage Transmogrify if we draw it. Turn one healer sock, so blue white flyers or white weenie. That looks like white weenie. Just killed the healer sock then. Yeah, I'll put an Elspeth on the bottom. Double savior. So there's no real point in blocking both saviors, is there? There's Gideon. I walk a righteous path. I will lend you my strength. Makes it indestructible. And they're gonna keep the other savior back on defense. Fair enough. Still just gonna play Omen of the Sun. Ooh, Transmogrify, nice. So what's the plan? Probably wanna play Elspeth here. Send the two tokens and Gideon. I doubt they trade for Savior. That was a good hit. And then I just need Elspeth to survive and make more tokens next turn. So I'm okay chumping Gideon. Linden's fine. So maybe it's a mono white life gain deck. I believe in you, friend. I believe it's transmogrify time. Then Forerunners, I can send at Gideon. The only way for them to save Gideon is by triple blocking, which is probably not gonna happen. I guess double block would also work, but I would be pretty happy with that outcome. So we'll just send the Forerunners at Gideon and the rest will go face. They can essentially trade a savior for a token by blocking with Linden and making her indestructible. Opponent just Retreat. takes the damage. Got an indestructible Linden. And a Shatter the Sky, fair enough. Was definitely not expecting a sweeper out of a white weenie deck. 
So Elspeth down, presumably, but then Prophecy can deal with Linden. Right. Opponent ignores Elspeth. I guess I'll bottom one Elspeth here, or I can bottom the Chandra since we're missing double reds. And then we can friendship. I guess I'll save the Elspeth for next turn. So I can pump two tokens, get full use, and then play another Elspeth. And Johnny Sprite Mates. It's not too bad. And next turn we can minus and then play another Elspeth and maybe minus one. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. So yeah, our red white swine surprise deck definitely surprised me as well. And uh performed much better than expected. We did probably get lucky to draw Transmogrify in most games. Don't even know if we saw a ton of uh, Luca in action, but we do have essentially six copies of Transmogrify, even though some are slightly more expensive. But then the backup plan of beating down with Sarkon we saw in action a few times. Definitely pretty nice against control decks where they might have Shadow the Sky to deal with the tokens otherwise. And then Tybalt preventing life gain also showed up big in some games, so the deck does have a few different dimensions and uh, angles of attack, which is always nice. But then it does have a very powerful combo game plan with the Forerunners. Just gotta hope that you don't draw too many Forerunners along the way. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.